lawsuit after listen up data breach that affected more than 106 million customers robert gray in los angeles with the very latest hey robert Hey, Neil, yeah, and it's already one of the biggest bank breaches ever, so you knew the lawyers wouldn't be far behind. Now, an FBI complaint says the hacker got information including social security numbers and credit scores of about 140,000 people. This follows major hacks in recent years at credit reporting firm Equifax and at Facebook, which exposed data between them of some 200 million people. So even if your data hasn't been exposed in one of these hacks, experts say you're still at risk. It can be any combination of, of information, your name, your date of birth, your address, and that gets pieced together and sold to the dark web in ways that, that can compromise your identity down the road. 33-year-old Paige Thompson allegedly accessed the bank's data back in March through the bank's faulty firewall. She was caught after bragging about it online. Now, she's a former Amazon Web Services employee. She identifies herself online as a hacker. Capital One CEO Richard Fairbanks said in a statement, I sincerely apologize for the understandable worry this incident must be causing those affected, and I am committed to making it right. Well, here's our first steps. They said most of the exposed data involves information submitted by customers and small businesses that applied for Capital One credit cards going all the way back to 2005, including addresses, dates of birth, and self-reported income. The nation's fifth largest credit card issuer says it will contact those affected by the hack and offer them free credit monitoring and identity protection. And, and Neil, you teed it up, lawyers uh, jumping right in, slapping a Capital One with a class action lawsuit, accusing the firm of serious security failures and negligence after they've had multiple past security breaches and clearly have not uh, cleaned up their act, according to these lawyers. Back to you. Robert Gray, thank you very, very much. So David Kennedy now, cybersecurity consultant. Uh, uh, trusted uh, SEC founder. You know, um, it's interesting, David. I guess in Capital One's case, a lot of this stuff is uploaded to the cloud. I guess the a Amazon's cloud. And uh, not that that in and of itself is dangerous, but a lot of banks avoid doing that for fear of something like this. Is this going to give them even more pause going forward? A lot of companies are really trying to shift towards the cloud because of the scalability and ease of use, uh, which in, its, in itself can cause a lot of major issues when you have ease of use and you misconfigure something uh, in a cloud environment. Financial industry, you're, you're right, traditionally has not moved to the cloud because of security concerns and privacy concerns around customer information. Uh, but we're seeing it being com become more and more common for the financial industry to start to leverage the cloud uh, more and more, usually just with less sensitive data. Uh, the fact that this has been out since 2005 and have over 106 million records, that's a, it's an alarming number uh, to see in a cloud infrastructure, right? Now, what I'm curious about is when you say less sensitive data, uh, you know, credit reports, or social security numbers, or uh, credit applications for either cards or home equity loans, when that kind of stuff happens, that's pretty sensitive data right there. That is, that is. And normally what I'm talking about on the sensitive data um, is anything that is what we call person identifiable information or anything that could be related to you, credit card numbers, uh, things like that that are related stuff to a that person's people can steal identity. And, and use, right? That's absolutely right. Anything that you can leverage from that side. Sales information might not be as, as sensitive, for example, uh, you know, uh, uh, trading or inf trading information that isn't relevant to specific individuals. Um, th those might be less sensitive. Uh, all of these are, are, you know, what we typically see the cloud being leveraged for. When it comes to trying to protect your personal information, though, usually having encryption in place, uh, ensuring that it's protected and having good controls is, is what we would consider best practices, in the, especially in the finance industry. You know, the finance industry has a lot of stuff on a lot of people, whether you're investing through them, have various uh, credit cards, uh, mortgages, yeah. equity loans through them. How should they handle that? I mean, they've got a lot under their umbrella, particularly traditional banks that have merged with financial institutions or brokerage, uh, old brokerage types. Uh, that's a lot more data that's at risk, potentially, right? That's right. I mean, if you look at historically uh, with Equifax, for example, substantial amount of information on individual employees, uh, individual uh, people. Same thing for the financial institutions. And you know, if you look at your, your social security number, your social security number is actually going for cents, not dollars or multiple dollars. It's going for cents because it's not really relatable to sell in the underground market. But you start to put together financial information like bank account numbers, addresses that are associated to high net worth individuals, all of those pieces of data that can absolutely be sold for a pretty good yield uh, in the underground market, those types of things are, are things that, that definitely need to be protected. Uh, and, and social security numbers as well. 
um, just less of a, of a monetary value towards those. So banks definitely need to do more. Encryption is, is something that is a proven science around trying to protect information. The fact that we have unencrypted data sitting in cloud infrastructure for large periods of time, that's an alarming trend and, and that needs to change. Banks, everybody needs to do a, a better job at, at protecting that type of information, especially our information. I think I'm on eight different credit monitoring services right now. So what's another one, right? Um, but that doesn't help me uh, after the breach. Well, if they go through to you, then I know all bets are off. Uh, David Kennedy, thank you very, very much. Thanks, Neil. Good to see you. All right. Well, China and the U.S. are back talking person to person uh, right now about trade in, in China. But is the president saying today that they're deliberately dragging their feet, hoping that he is not reelected and they can deal with someone else after this? I don't know about the latter, but the fact of the matter is, as we're dipping further and further off into this information era pertaining to all this data that is being that is being uh, exploited, we must always consider protecting our own self-interest in no matter how that we distribute our information regardless whether we're licking a stamp and sending out a letter or we're sending it out through texting or we're sending it out through allowing for the banking industry to leave us vulnerable we must always protect our better interest in regard to data research, exploratory compromises that can happen to any of our lives. Please, please do not take this lightly in regard to all this defery that is being occurred here in America pertaining to compromising people's privacy and people's policies in regard to who they are and what they are. Thanks again for listening. Good luck to all of us, and once more, shalom.